welcome to the Pickleball Recovery Podcast, where we highlight products and practices to help you feel better faster, so you can spend less time stiff, sore, and injured, and more time on the court doing what you love. This podcast is sponsored by AlloMD. Don't just mask pain, eliminate it. AlloMD provides intense relief and advances continual repair for both acute injuries and chronic pain. All natural patented technology developed by doctors to get you back in the game fast without the use of opioids, steroids, or ANSAIDs. AlloMD, harnessing the power of pure natural ingredients that provide deep, penetrating repair. Patented, validated, natural. Learn more at www.allomd.com and make sure to use the discount code PBR at checkout to save $5 off your order. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to another episode of Pickleball Recovery. I'm your host, Tim Ringgold. How you doing? Did you play any pickleball today? I hope so. I played some good pickleball today. Um, but by the time you hear this, that will have been in the past. Ha <laughs> ha. So I'm pretty excited because I am playing in my final tournament of the year this weekend in San Clemente, uh, the PPA, whatever it's called. I think it's called the finals. I don't know. Um, playing senior pro singles, playing senior pro men's doubles. Very excited about playing with a long time rec buddy, first time tournament partner. So that'll be neat. Uh, we had some good matches this morning, kind of gelling uh, together. And uh, yeah, really excited about it. I am uh, basically showering in Ultimate Repair X <laughs> like three times a day right now. Uh, I played in an MLP style round robin tournament uh, team tournament on Sunday. I was on the court far longer than I'm used to. So uh, I'm a bit wrecked. So I'm working really hard at my recovery right now, putting in the time. Um, you know, it's it, for me, I may, I may have said this on the podcast before, but I have this joke that I have a body that was built for chess. It was not built to be an athlete. I am a musician also. And I would say, you know, I'm, I have a body that was built for, you know, classical music. Uh, just, just one of those things. You may have a favorite sports team where you follow and some of the guys on the team are never injured. And some of the guys seem to be always injured. Like there's uh, my favorite sports team is Arsenal football club in uh, England for uh, premier league soccer. We got this one guy on our team, Thomas Partey, who's like phenomenal, but man, the guy's injured all the time. Uh, another guy, Gabriel Jesus, phenomenal, injured so much of the time. And I, I empathize. <laughs> I'm that guy. So uh, that's why this stuff's so important to me. So I'm working really hard to make sure that I am in, uh, you know, in as good shape, not playing too much going into this, but getting enough reps and, uh, and not burning myself out on the way, you know, to the tournament. So anyhow, uh, super, super excited uh, about this weekend. Um, the second half of the year has been tough for me. I, you know, you guys know my story. Um, I started out in 2023 after hiring uh, Kyle Valerie from Stretch Effect in the end of 22 in great shape. I mean, I was in the best, what I thought was the best competing physical shape of my life uh, by the time we hit April and I got my first pro, uh, senior pro medal, uh, taking uh, silver in singles at PPA uh, Red Rocks. I was really, you know, lean machine. And, uh, and then I get that head injury. And then I sprained my ankle, you know, hyperextended knee. And, you know, in the second half of the year has just been just this slow grind back trying, you know, to get back. And uh, one of those dark night of the soul kind of things that I talked about with Rob Nunnery on his uh, episode. It's like, am I ever going to get back to where I was? Uh, you know, I still have random ankle pain uh, for no good reason, you know, uh, from my ankle sprain in September. And it's just like, you know, sometimes you just want to throw in the towel because this thing that's so fun has, is just also so painful. So, you know, I definitely walk the walk, you guys. I do all the things I can do on a daily basis to try to keep this body operating as it, you know, at its, at its highest potential. Because for me, that's what's satisfying is, you know, today there were some movements on the court that I did that, uh, including there was one ATP that, you know, like everybody on the court was just blown away by my speed and my movement and being able to take a net ball. Uh, you know, we weren't even dinking. I was in the transition zone and someone hit a shot wide, hit the net, rolled right. And I moved from the transition zone up to a net ball that was an ATP. It wasn't even just a wide dink. And that's so satisfying, you know, and uh, I just want to be able to recreate those kind of moments as often as possible. But, you know, too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. So here we are. Uh, perfect segue into today's conversation with trainer Jill Martin, because Jill, uh, I met Jill when I interviewed Dane and uh, he's like, you need to interview her. And he, he like we were setting up and he had she had just stretched him out and he just pointed at her. And I was like, who's she? You know, one of those kind of moments. And he's like, that's my trainer, Jill. And so we met 
And then I was like, hey, let's talk. And so we started talking and it turns out she trains Dane and she trains Altoff Merchant, another senior pro, you know, new senior pro, uh, just kind of aged up into the, uh, you know, grandpa category. Welcome, Altoff. Join us. It's bliss. But I was like, oh, wow, cool. So let's start talking. And immediately we geeked out and I was like, oh, you got to be on the pod. That's that's it. Um, so the conversation we're going to have today, we're going to talk about like, what are the most common things that she sees with her students? Cause she trains a lot of pickleball players, amateurs and pros. So we're going to talk very specifically about the body and how it works in pickleball so that you can be optimizing the muscles that you need to be optimizing in order to play better. Cause when you move better, you play better. And you already know that cause you're listening to this podcast, you figured this out. So kudos. Um, and just on that note, if you know somebody who's struggling with chronic issues, would you just refer them to the podcast? That would mean a lot. Uh, word of mouth is definitely required for this podcast to grow and help more people feel better faster. So thanks in advance for passing it along. So let's get into it. Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and I'll see you on the other side. Jill Martin, thanks for joining me on Pickleball Recovery. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Well, this is fun. Yes. We're hanging out at PPA Las Vegas. We are in the Pickleball Central booth check out some of the gear that they made for Vegas. It's hilarious, by the way. Thorlo is the sponsor and they've got like casino socks and uh, yeah, casino uh, themed pickleball gear. And I've seen quite a few people in that so far. And we're over in the hyper ice kind of corner of things in our hyper ice chairs. And I was remarking how I have a couple of the hyper ice products with me on the road. Uh, and uh, so this stuff doesn't ever get too far away. Yeah, from me. I also have a Hypervolt that I use. Yeah. It's a critical piece of recovery equipment. Yes, it is. I fully agree. Um, funny how we met was uh, our mutual friend, Dane Gingrich, who is also a guest on the show. Uh, and for those watching and listening right now, I can't remember. Well, I don't know at the moment we're recording which of these interviews is going to go first. So people will have either already. I should definitely go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just kick him down the road a little bit, Dean. <laughs> senior pro. Just, yeah, who cares what he has to say? Yeah. <laughs> Stick to the mental game stuff. <laughs> That's right. Stay out of my, stay out of my lane, Dean. <laughs> you heard it here first. Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, spoken like a true uh, client and mentor. So Dean comes to you because you help him move better. Yes, that is right. Yeah, we, we work together. We both help one another. Yes. I met him on the pickleball court. Actually, the first time I met him wasn't even through him. It was through his daughter. Our children went to school together for uh, a long, long time. Okay. And then I started playing pickleball, and eventually I had heard um, I had heard about him and that he was a great coach. And so eventually, once I had you know worked my way up to a certain level, I took a lesson with him. And during the lesson, I did something on one foot, kind of like in, a, in yoga, you would say like a warrior three position. I took a shot out of the air and he, um, he was like, how did you do that? I want to be able to do that. I need that for my game. And I explained that I was a yoga instructor and a personal trainer. And so we started to work together. And so I take lessons from him and um, I train him. Yeah. And he takes lessons from you. Oh, oh, indeed or, he or, does. Or does he? <laughs> Does he actually take the lessons that you give? This is the real question. Well, the good news is that before I was a trainer, I was a lawyer. And so I am well trained in the art of persuasion. So often he doesn't know that he's taking a lesson from me. But I um, I, I work around. Yeah, I use oh, all my so mental good. tricks. All the dark arts. Yeah. So he thinks that he's the boss of me. But oh, but man. I know the opposite to be That's true. Outstanding. Well done. Yeah. Let the man think he has the power. Yes, exactly. While you wield the power. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So I make him feel really, really good about himself. And then, and then I'm like the puppeteer. <laughs> <laughs> dance, Dan, dance. Yeah. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. In fact, I think I just kicked my microphone loose because I was laughing so hard. So, uh, cause I can just imagine, cause he likes to be like, <laughs> and I could just see you above him doing this the whole time. <laughs> It's great, great imagery. Ah, oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because this is, of course, right after we finish, I'm going to use all the ammo oh, with him back oh, at the booth. Oh, please do. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. counting on it. Yes, of course. It takes a team to, to manage Dan. Yes, yeah. he's, he's a bit much. 
<laughs> she's a bit much, uh, as am I. So it's like like attracts like, you know. So that's why we we banter. He might say that about me. Okay, okay, he might. Those, <laughs> he might. Those who know and love you might say that. You yeah, know, I'm that that I'm a lot. You're, as well. you're a bit. That, that's good. No, I mean that's you my know, bulb shines bright. Yes. Well said. Know thyself. Just you know, like I'm 100% Myers Briggs extrovert on their oh. you know non scientific scale. Yeah. Sorry, Myers Briggs. It's not scientific. <laughs> But um, it's okay. I'm not the first person to say it. But I am 100% extrovert on that. And I'm so much that in my professional world as a music therapist, there's one of my colleagues who one day told me at a conference, she said, when I see you coming, I have to check in with myself (laughs) to see if I'm ready for you. And I just was like, Is that a compliment? Thanks. Like, I had no idea what to do with it. You know what I mean? But she was just being very blunt about her own self-care, frankly. So uh, I was like, all right. Uh, I'll, I, and I was going to say, I'll tone it down. And I'm like, I can't tone it down. Like, I'm, this is what you get. This yeah, is- I'm an ambivert. Okay. That's what my wife is. My wife's an ambivert. So she says she's moving more towards, she started introvert, and she's more moving more towards the center. And I would say that I might have been like 105 when I started out extrovert, but I'm moving towards the center, so now I'm only 100% extrovert. Yeah, I feel like I started further towards extrovert, and as I get older, I need more and more. More and more, you time. Yeah. You space. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe I'm also surrounded by boys at all times, so that could could crank up anybody's introvert scale. Yeah, I have a client, a coaching client, who is in a house full of boys. And she tells me the stories, and I'm just like, I wouldn't want to be surrounded by me. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. So uh, let's talk about um, different things that uh, you love to focus on and, and kind of how you discovered the importance of that. We were talking a little bit before about your journey, finding yoga. Yeah. And then, like many things, they bring a lot to the table, but there's rarely any one practice or modality that that does everything in every way. Right. So tell, tell a little bit about that story. Well, so my whole life, I've always been an athlete of some kind or another, and that's kind of my addiction of choices movement. Nice. And uh, so I, I played soccer when I was younger, and then in college and after college, I did a lot of running. So I was kind of a cardio junk, junkie, for which is pretty typical in my age group. Yep. I'm almost 50. Yep. And um, didn't do any strength training, didn't do any flexibility stuff, and then that as it is apt to do, caught up with me. And so in my, I think my early, my late 30s, I was playing soccer and I hurt myself. I couldn't do any of the things I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I really like a deal. And I walked by a yoga studio that had like a $25 for unlimited for a month. So that's um, a deal. Yeah. That was a pretty good deal. It's called a compelling offer. Yeah. And and I couldn't do anything else. So I was like, well, I'm going to do this. And then I had to get my money's worth. So I went every day for 30 days. Okay. (laughs) Because I, as I said, I burn bright. I, um, (laughs) intensity with everything. You're going to go hard. I go hard. Yep. And I loved it. And I practiced for a number of years. And then I wanted to learn more about it. And so did a teacher training, but it was never going to teach. And then ended up teaching. Of course. And um, the flexibility that yoga brought, you know, I always say that I'm the least flexible yoga teacher that I know because I still do a lot of the other, I do all the things that kind of unwind the work that I, that I do. And so okay. I end up kind of in a nice, a better homeostasis than I used to be. Okay. And, um, but eventually I continue to do endurance athletic stuff like half Ironman and like um, ultra running. And I was getting injured a lot. And I just felt like I had reached a phase of my life where I had to look outside of what I was doing, which was kind of cardio and yoga and see what I was missing. Mm. And a lot of that um, ended up being strength training. And so I started to do a lot of kind of focused mobility work uh, and and different strength training and eventually um, became a certified personal trainer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Fellow soccer player as well. And... uh, Got injured in my 40s, too many concussions. Oh, fudge. And so no more, you know, and it was like first like ball to head would be, you know, like a, I, I, would get, I started getting concussions and then uh, just shoulder to shoulder, just yeah. going in on a 50-50 ball. If we went for a ball together and we hit each other shoulder to shoulder at the same time, that would trigger a concussion. And so I was like, well, I'm out because you can't not go for a 50-50 right. ball. 
Right. You know, and so. Yeah, I don't have a stop. I don't have a stop mechanism when I'm playing a competitive yeah. sport. Yeah. And so when I was playing soccer, especially once I started using my body for my job, I thought I, there's no way I'm not going to eventually get injured doing this. And you're playing against other 40 year olds who a lot of them are weekend warriors and yes. they're somewhat deconditioned. Yes. And so they don't, they are going for these aggressive balls. They can't control their body. Yes. And they come flying in. Yeah. Oh my God. We had this one guy this one time, sorry guys, off topic, but his name, his nickname was Rambo because he wore a, a red. <laughs> hey, that's my nickname. Oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> that's as we keep going here. Um, he wore this like red headband. And he would cut two-footed flying through the air, oh, no. you know, on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. A Sunday. We played on Sunday. And I'd be like, bro, we've all got to go into an office tomorrow morning. Like, right. lighten up, Francis. Right. You well, know? our first year, um, so we formed a team of moms. Okay. And all of our kids went to this elementary school that the, the mascot was the panther. And okay. so we were, we were the pink panthers, all of the moms. And in our first season, we had two torn ACLs and a broken collarbone okay. on just our team alone. Okay. Yeah, so yep. that, that was, I didn't play much longer than that. Yep, we're not 19 anymore. Nope. Not in Toto anymore. Or not in Kansas anymore, Toto. That's what I meant to say there. Day three at a tournament. <laughs> That's day three brain right there. <laughs> All right, so uh, you found that there was something missing for you. It wasn't just being flexible. It was like this element of strength that your body needed to optimally perform and move yeah, the way and you wanted to Yeah, protect my joints. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so... Putting that together now, and you said focused mobility. I like that phrase. Can you unpack that a little? What does yeah, that mean? Yeah, so if you, think about, um, if you think about range of motion and you yep. think about how you have a passive range of motion, and so an example would be that um, let's say you were lying down and you put a strap around one foot and yep. you pulled your leg, your leg straight towards you. Right. So that would be your passive range of motion because you're not using the musculature of your leg to bring it towards you. You're using your arm to draw your leg towards you, but the, the um, flexibility is going to be in your hamstring, right? Yep. So your active range of motion, so that's your passive flexibility. Okay. So your mobility or your active range of motion is your ability to control the range of motion with that, with the muscles controlling that joint. Gotcha. And um, so that's what I started working on more. So rather than a lot of yoga, well, you know, yoga is a very broad tent. And so yes, I don't ever want to sure. say like yoga does this or that totally. because there's totally. so many different kinds of yoga. But yep. oftentimes yoga um, does a lot to build uh, passive flexibility. Okay. And so um, I had been following a number of teachers who had started to kind of reach outside of the tradition and bring more strength components into it and gotcha. bring more kind of targeted mobility work okay. into it. And okay. um, those teachers were really influential to my way of thinking. And that eventually, you know, took me farther and farther outside of yoga into doing, um, you know, the personal trainer world. And uh, yeah, well, at one I was talking recently to somebody and I, I feel like when I think about, people ask a lot, like, how do you find a good yoga instructor? Or how do you find a good personal trainer? And my personal opinion is that you want somebody who isn't siloed, who, because right. each of these, each of these areas offers something different, yep. but is also lacking something. And so yes. having, working with somebody who can kind of reach in between different modalities and take the best of all of the worlds, I, I think is, it. is a real, and who is chronically curious and um, because because all this, everything we know about this is changing by the day. And yes. so if like you kind of learn your stuff 10 years ago and you're like, okay, I'm done. Now I'm certified, whatever. Um, you're missing out on so much. So like that wasn't the question, but when, when I think about like what makes somebody super qualified, it's somebody who's like always looking to learn more, who knows the limits of their knowledge and who is looking outside of whatever their chosen certification is. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, I really appreciate that because there's a big difference um, when you are passively stretching and when you're activating those muscles, what they can and can't do, particularly at different r ranges of the, you know, er portions of the range. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, being able to work your quads when you're in one position of flexion versus into a deep lunge, right? right? Uh, that, that end of the range, having strength there right. as well as in other places. And I think one of the things people miss is that in our daily life as 21st century suburbanites and urbanites, you know, in this developed world, 
we are not putting our muscles through a full range of motion right. in our activities of daily living. Right, right. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes, and then I would say there, that another thing that happens, that that is true, that we're much more constricted in how we use our bodies and, yep. you know, in the work that we do and just the activities that we do. And then even when we got, decide to have our, you know, let's say that most um, people who are active, let's say that they have a designated activity period yep. um, for like a half an hour, an hour, or maybe even two hours a day or a few times a week, that activity tends to be repetitive yep. and tends to... Um, when, when I say repetitive, doing the same motions that don't necessarily mimic the, the loads and forces that we experience kind of outside of the gym or off the mat. And yep. so that you're, you're absolutely prepared to, to do a perfect plank where you to ever fall into a perfect plank position. Or like if you're, you know, trip <laughs> off a curve and you land in a perfect 90, 90 lunge, your body's like nailed it, but that's not how life works. Right. <laughs> and so if we don't train in kind of a dynamic and fluid way and challenge our joints, um, to, to really accommodate different loads yep. and, and unpredictable motions, yeah. then, um, then we're prone to injury. Yeah, and, and let's take that onto the pickleball court because if pickleball is nothing, it is unpredictable right. and awkward in terms of the positions the body gets in. Right. And because the court is so small, you are moving from cramped position to cramped position and you're reaching and you're lunging and you're you know, there's a lot of unpredictability in terms of how you're loading and where you're loading and things like that. And, and you and I both know that how you move is how you hit. Right. And how you hit is how you play. Right. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, most players who come to the sport, first of all, there's this idea that it's a very... Um, that it's a really easy sport, that it's yeah. a low load sport because yep. the court is smaller, that it's for people who aren't athletic. Right. And, um, and the, I mean, the great thing about pickleball is there's so many different levels and there is a low bar to entry. Yep. But as you play more competitively, it does require athleticism. And then if you want to really gain an edge, um, in addition to injury prevention, yes. if you improve your agility, your speed, your strength and mobility, like there are huge dividends in the game. And yes. I've always felt like for me personally, I don't have a racket background. I'm completely addicted to pickleball. I play a lot of pickleball. And my advantage is my athleticism. Yes. And I use my athleticism to make up for kind of the lack of racket background that I have. Yep. And then I'm, I'm trying to kind of backfill that, yeah. that part now. But I it's an uphill battle yeah. because... You know. I do. We I didn't don't. even know what topspin was until three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's a qualifier right there. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's we how have, bad it was. We have work to do. <laughs> yeah. We have work. I Dane remember. was like, oh, okay, all right. We're going to roll ask, it back. Roll it back. I used to ask him these questions, and he would. He was really good at not shaming me for my questions. <laughs> but I'd be like, what's it called when you, you know, you like sweep the paddle oh, over the ball so and then it like spins a certain good. way and like how do you know the difference between backspin and topspin anyway oh, yes i've made so a lot of good. progress since yeah then. because you don't want to say backskin and foreskin <laughs> <laughs> or you might you're welcome dad joke it was just sitting there it was just low-hanging fruit <laughs> Sorry, Jill. Jill, I'm usually pretty good at no dad jokes on this podcast, but that one was just right there. <laughs> Couldn't do anything about it. Guilty as charged. But moving on. Um, so let's let's talk about like what are as a trainer. Uh, are you training any besides Dane? Do you train any other pickleball players or, or any um, other people who are I coming into with, your world? Yeah, I mean, some I, other picklers. I work with a bunch of local amateurs. Okay, And Perfect. then I work with Altoff Merchant. Oh, and, right on. And, okay. um, and we work remotely because he's in Kentucky and I'm in California. Okay. But we work on Zoom together and he's, Very cool. he's tons of fun. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> so then, that, th then let's kind of talk about what are you seeing in terms of, uh, you know, the either deficiencies on the court or the injuries on the court. And then what are some easy strategies that we can apply towards those right um so what are you noticing? 
let's see. I would say in the higher level players, I mean, not necessarily the pros that I work with, but in the players that I see who are, I tend to work with people who are in my age group, okay. which is like maybe, you know, 40 to 60. And in those players who are playing a lot, unless they've had a good movement practice, um, I've seen a lot of low back stuff. Okay. Um, and, um, Oftentimes, that seems to be related to some hip mobility issues, to um, kind of the whole post, like uh, being super quad dominant, not having much power on the posterior chain, like the, you know, the glutes, the hamstrings. Um, and yeah, so uh, Tim is pointing to himself um, yes. as, as perhaps guilty of yep. not having um, a Sprinter. robust posterior yeah, yeah. chain. Robust posterior <laughs> chain. No girl ever <laughs> saw me walk by and go, no, hey, that, that is, is a robust <laughs> posterior chain. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> well, so I, you know, as a, as a former runner, I would put myself in the same yes. category. Yep. And, um, yep. and that's actually, so when I got injured, a different time it was really because I really was lacking strength I was so quad dominant yes. and ended up kind of rehabbing myself through doing a ton of building like glute strength glutes and, and hamstrings yeah. and um yeah and, and at that time I thought that I was really just waiting it out until I was old enough to get a hip replacement and now I have wow. no pain and can do all the things I want to do that's profound yeah I mean I a lot of people think that way yeah. because that's so like oh that's my future Yes. Not well, I had chronic pain in my hip for probably three years and eventually gave up running because of it. And, um, and anytime I did anything pounding on the surface, mm -hmm. I would get really bad joint pain. And, uh, then I just completely kind of changed the way that I was training and it took a long time. I mean, I think that's the other key yes. is that, that making changes, it's a hundred percent worth the effort. Yes. People often give up a little bit too soon because bodies take some time to change yep. and it took a while, but I am completely pain free and can, I can run again. I can do whatever I want to do, which is great. That's awesome. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Seriously. That's really cool. I'm really happy to hear that story. I, uh, I like God, the backside, you know, just the flat side, you know, was <laughs> just <laughs> such an issue. But one of the things I noticed was I was struggling with um, hip flexor, constant hip, fl hip flexor pulls, so as muscle pulls. And um, so this is one of my favorite things to talk about, actually. No kidding. Well, because a lot of um, I mean, it's, it really intrigues me because people will typically come to you and say, my hip flexors always feel tight. Yeah. And so their belief is that because there's this, which of course there's no such thing as a like tight muscle, but there's a, that sensation of tightness. Yep. And so the belief is it feels tight and therefore the solution is it's increased flexibility. Yes. And oftentimes it's a lack of strength. It's a weak muscle, not it's, a tight muscle. Yeah. And yep. so, and there's some super easy, great ways to kind of do targeted strengthening of your hip flexors. Yes that provide a lot of relief for people who really thought that it was just, so they're doing all these kind of lunge-like stretches right. and, and getting no traction on their no, issue. not and, at all. Yeah, and so, yeah, so that's... I've, so, yeah. what would be an easy example of a hip flexor strengthening Okay, so exercise? one of my favorites, so let's say that, um, so everything that you want to do when you're, um, just like as a general, this is like 101 yes. in building strength, Yes. is um, your body likes to gradually build a tolerance to load. And okay. so you're not going to start, like, it's kind of intuitive. If you were going to go bench press, you wouldn't start with 300 pounds. Yes. You're going to progressively load yourself so that your body has a chance to learn to accommodate that load. And it's going to be the same thing with your hip flexors. So um, what I would do is start with um, a loop band, one of those elastic bands that's uh -huh. in a, a loop. And I would start with a light band okay. and... Um, if you're pretty uh, balanced, then you could place the band around the arches of your feet and you're gonna stand up and you're gonna pull, um, you're gonna come into knee flexion. So you're gonna pull one knee towards you. So okay. the band is creating resistance okay. as you pull the knee towards you. And so that also is then giving you some nice balance work on your standing foot. And so you could do that 10 times, do the other side 10 times, take a break and rep it. So then if your balance isn't quite there yet, that's yep. fine. Yep. Hold on to Hold something, to something and still because do it. our target is our hip flexor, yep. not our balance. But like okay. if you can multitask, that's it's always great. Sure, two for right? one. And so you do that for a while. When that becomes easy, you can use 
a stronger band. Like and then eventually you can use a, um, a kettlebell. And mm -hmm. so you can hook the kettlebell onto the uh, kind of the the ball of the foot, like around okay. the toe, and then okay. you'll do the same thing. So you'll pull wow. you'll pull the knee towards the chest while you stand. Okay. So you ready for my uh, when I brush my teeth? Yeah. I lie on my back, and I bring both knees up. And I don't I, know that I can support this behavior, but go and ahead. Then, and then I drop <laughs> one heel to uh -huh. the ground. Uh huh. Bring it back up. Drop the other heel to the ground. I like it. Okay. Bring it back up. Just not the toothbrushing part. Oh no, this is the multitasking. We talked about multitasking. But aren't you going to choke on your on your on your? I don't um... swallow. <laughs> Who swallows their toothpaste? I know, That's but what disgusting. if you take like a big breath, like as you're like exerting yourself? I, well, it's just body weight, so like. <laughs> I hope that I'm not exerting myself too much. Oh, oh, before I forget. Uh-huh. Because of multitasking. Uh, I mean, but I want to hear your exercise. <laughs> no, that's the exercise. Okay, good. But okay. here's the thing. And then I started, so that's the bottom row. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so, so I do 20. No wonder your teeth are so nice uh, and white. Come on. Oh, so 20. Uh -huh. And then I do both feet together. Up oh, and back for so 10. So nice core work. And uh -huh. that's the bottom. Uh -huh. And then when I get to the top, it's... Uh, I can't do it on camera because it would offend people, but uh, basically both knees go up and then legs open, legs closed for so adductors. Some abduction. Uh -huh. Yeah, for those and adductors. adductors. And, and it was amazing how weak all those like kegels, and you can add adductors, bands to all and so as, and you could, you, could pr you could ramp that up. And it was so interesting because it was like, I'm going to be brushing my teeth two minutes every morning. Yeah. I can do some Linking simple... is so smart. Linking is so smart. Yep. Yep. So uh, there's a great book, uh, a couple of great books, Atomic Habits is a great one. Yeah. And the author describes it as habit stacking. Yeah. That's so, how I, I, so for multitask. years, for years and years and years and years, I always wanted to be able to do a pull up. And, okay. um, but in, um, well, this was just in my defense, this was before I really had learned a lot about strength training. Okay. And so I, I, you know, didn't prepare myself at all. I would just go up to a pull-up bar and be like, why can't I do this? Anyway, when I finally, like, approached it in a smarter way, I then tried to do linking. And so I have I have two sons and a husband. And um, after dinner every night, we would go. We have a pull-up bar. And we would, after dinner every night, we would go practice our, our pull-ups. And my yeah. younger son would yell, beefcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Cartman, alive and well. <laughs> Beefcake. Beefcake. <laughs> Are you tired of being a 90-pound weakling? I'm 90 pounds. <laughs> it's one of the greatest episodes I of all time. I can finally do pull-ups, though. Do you see that? It did work. That's, that's how you do it. And pull-ups are not easy. So no, they're not they're really easy. Hard. They're yeah. really hard. They are. Okay, wait, but really quick, okay. because... This is, this is one of the ways that I love doing exercises. So uh -huh. you asked about the hip flexor exercise. We talked about the standing version of that. Yes. So one way that's a nice way to continue to challenge your body is to replicate the same motion but change your relationship to gravity. And okay. so there's two different ways to do that with this same exercise. Okay. So one of them you reminded me of. Yep. So you can basically do when... The, same, the band same is in the thing. same place around the arches of the tree. This yep. time you're lying down. Yep. And it's like almost like a dead bug or a, if you're yeah. familiar with dead bug yep. or a yogi bicycle and you're using that band to increase the resistance on, for your hip flexors. Gotcha. And then you can do the same thing um, like a mountain climber. So you can be in plank. Okay. So you can be in plank. Again, the band is around the arches of the feet. And so this time you're activating your shoulders, you're activating like different parts of your core. TBA. And plus yep. you're doing the, um, you're activating your hip flexors with that band. Nice. As nice. you pull one knee towards um, your chest and the other. That's great. Very cool. So we just talked about kind of strengthening hip flexors when we thought that, you know, many of us thought they were too tight. They were really too weak. Right. Um, and one of the things I also realized was that I was moving, when I would go to initiate a forward movement or a lateral movement, I was pulling my body rather than driving mm -hmm. off of my posterior chain. Mm -hmm. I was pulling, because I'm so quad dominant also, right. I was like pulling my body forward and it was my trainer who said, do you know the difference between the two? And I was like, no. He's right. like, well, that's why you're pulling. You're, you're compensating, right? you know, and your body, athletes are great compensators. That's well, bodies Kyle are really Valerie. smart that way. Yeah. I mean, bodies are really, really smart. Yeah. So you have to outsmart them. Shout out to my trainer, Kyle Valerie. There's two episodes uh, in the past, I don't remember what episodes there are of him working with me on this. And, but thanks to him, like getting into my glutes, yeah. like, uh, doing glute activations before playing right. to get my brain, my mind muscle connection, that neuromuscular connection to remember right. if I want to move left, I'm driving off my right. Right. 
Oh. Right. And you'll see me on the court doing lateral, either with or without a band, just getting, and you'll see me, I'll t I'm tapping yeah. my outside glute, like my glute medius, right. just making that sensory connection, right. and then driving off it. Tapping, driving, tapping, driving, and I'm sure my friends have all wondered, what the hell is he doing <laughs> along the way? Who wouldn't want to tap that? Hey, yeah. there you go. Dad joke. Uh, dad joke. Um, and now that's, the, and that's what I'm trying to do is to get my, the right muscles firing to do the right things. Right. Right. Um, so let's talk about, we, we said posterior chain. So what are a couple of things that are easy? We just described some hip flexor things. Right. What um, else? So... Let's see, if we were to start with no equipment stuff and you're yep. kind of, this is like your intro to yep. moving outside of just how you move on your everyday life. I, I mean, there's reasons that certain exercises are basic and popular and it's because they're really valuable. So, yeah. um, you know, a squat, yes. I think uh, yes. every pickleball player should be doing squats because you're doing them all the time on the court. And, and oftentimes a squat is a really revealing position for asymmetries in your body. And so mm. if you watch yourself do a squat in the, in the mirror, it can be really helpful to figure out where, which side, um, you're tighter on or lack or have a little less strength on because okay. that, that hip will tend to, uh, the weaker hip will tend to lower sooner. You can figure out, you know, cause you're a squat involves ankle mobility, knee mobility, yep. hip mobility. So you can see a lot in the squat. Wow. So, um, and then lunges again, cause you're doing it a lot, particularly in pickleball, practicing a lunge with rotation is really important. Okay. Um, I, because you're rotating a ton. A lot of people, uh, end up hurting themselves. Uh, oftentimes it's like taking a, you'll hear a lot from pickleballers. I was, I was reaching to take a backhand yep. dink. Yes. Um, so you're effectively in a lunge with a rotation yeah. and it's a little bit more than your body can accommodate. Gotcha. And so working those ranges of motion is, is important. And then you can easily add load in different ways. And then you also want to work something that requires like some balance and a hinge position. So like in the yoga world, that would be called warrior three. Okay. And in the personal training world, that would be an RDL, like a Russian deadlift. So that okay. um, in, if you're not familiar with either of those terms, that would be one leg is planted on the ground. You kind of hinge forward and the other leg is lifted Whoop. off of the ground yep. behind you. So yep. you look like a capital letter T. Your hips are square. Your shoulders are square. Yep. Um, that's a great position to practice. And that's there's a, a whole move. lot of ways to work your way into that. Yep. Um, if you don't quite have either the balance or mobility yet, you can hold on to something. You can always have a bend in the lower leg. Um, you know, just always kind of working within your range and giving your body time to, yep. to progress. Great. Yeah. Uh, one, we were just having this talk at the uh, Ultimate Repair X booth with a guy whose low back is bothering him. And I said you're hinging in the wrong place. It's classic pickleball, right? You're, you're bending over this way instead of bending your knees and your hips and right. keeping your back upright and engaging those glutes. Right. And he was like, glutes? Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I mean, like, I would didn't have... didn't even occur to him, you know, that yeah. he needs to be doing a squat where, you know, he's dropping and he's activating his glutes. I said, listen, if your butt doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. Like, you should... Right. Tyson McGuffin, my first camp with Tyson one of my first coaches, he's like, he used the phrase pickle ass. He's like, your glutes should be on fire at the kitchen line. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are kind of rounding, they're flexing through the back to try to reach for the ball. Yep. Um, yep. And I mean, I want to be really clear. No motion is bad motion. Okay. You know, like our bodies are, our spines are meant to flex. Our yep. spines are meant to extend. Like, and there's, um, I don't like to vilify any sort of motion, but when you're Fair. doing a repetitive motion at load and speed, then you, you do need to develop kind of strong movement patterns. Um, nice. Though there are, the, as much as I even say that, you can find plenty of athletes that deviate from that and don't have problems. So yeah. like bodies are smart and can accommodate, but for many of us, it's going to help to, um, to develop kind of more functional movement patterns. Yeah, great. Okay, so. Oh, but I would say, sorry, real quick, if yeah. you owned a band, so, that was, so we started off with yeah. if you owned nothing. That's right. But if you owned a loop band, just yes. an elastic band, which they're super cheap. Yes. So if you don't own one, then. Amazon. Yeah, then get some. And then I would say, based on everything, all the pickleball players I've worked with, and you and it can never hurt anybody to strengthen their glutes a little bit. So yeah. what I would do would be super simple to start being on a tabletop position, which means you're on your hands and your knees. Okay. And then the band is going to be above your knees. Okay. And you'll do... Um, I, 
uh, oftentimes it's called a fire hydrant position. So this is for the lateral, the outside glute where you'll lift one knee away like a dog at a fire peeing at a fire oh, hydrant. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So you'll do that. Yeah. And then um, you'll do the same idea, but you'll lift one like up towards the ceiling as if you're stamping the ceiling with one foot to like activate right your- right up behind. Right up, okay. yeah, to yeah. activate- Ooh, that'll light up your glute. Your gluteus maximus, yes. your big fella yes. back there. That's Absolutely. a really great one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then again, you can- always change your body position so you can do that from a lot oh like the one that you do i think on the top row of your teeth yeah. where you do abduction yep. you can yep. do that same thing yep. you can do it from a standing position to add balance so that you're in basically a squat yep. as you abduct and yep. kick back nice yeah yeah and guys i i want to also say like i want to break up the illusion that it takes two hours a day to be in the gym oh my gosh to not at all stuff because when my trainer was giving me these exercises, they were one minute in duration. Yes. That's it. It was like, you're kidding. Or like 30 seconds, you know? And it was like, no way, that can't help. And it's like, no, it begins to make that connection without you hurting yourself. Right. And without you ending up really sore so then you don't want to do it the next time. Right. Well, and also, you know, depending on how accommodating the person that you live with, if you live with somebody is, I like to, so my living room looks like a 24-hour fitness and I have like on our fireplace mantle rather than family photos and stuff, I have um, weights and, <laughs> and bands. And uh. so, because I actually hated weightlifting for okay. a long time and I found it super boring. Like yep. I, like yeah. running up a mountain, no problem, but lifting weights for 20 minutes, I wanted to like poke my eyeballs out. And yep. so I, I personally, because of my kind of attention span and temperament had to make it very accessible. So yes. my weights are right next to where I cook. I cook a lot and I do, um, one, repetition I like do my first set of exercises uh -huh. I unload the dishwasher and then I go I do my next set I like chop up the onions so like I just keep things handy and fit them in when I can yep. rather than be like I have to find this time to go to a gym and it really doesn't take very much equipment at all no it doesn't and far guys, less than most pickleball paddles cost oh 100% the amount of gear I have for the price of one paddle today is a lot of gear yeah and I will tell you guys the number of times I've injured my hip flexor since I started brushing my teeth while doing this dead bug kind of lift thing, zero. I yeah. have injured myself zero times. And this was a chronic condition I had. Right. So it is not a big investment of time. It's just small steps done over time make big differences. So. And you, and there's really great online resources. I mean, there's a ton, yes. if, there's a ton of online resources, really great content. I, there's I obviously agree. bad content as well, but there's really great content that offers lots of different ideas yep. on um, how to strengthen, how to do like injury prevention, how to enhance your performance. Yep. And so it just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. One of the, one of the resources I really like, we had them as a guest, it's called Prehab. Oh, they uh -huh. used to be the Prehab guys. The Prehab guys. I yep. love them. Yeah. We had one of them. Ara Dr. Arash Maksudi was one of the Prehab guys was one of our I guests. I love their stuff. They have such good stuff. Really good stuff. So go check out the Prehab guys uh, on YouTube. Their videos are great. There's three of them, the guys, but now there's a whole team. So it's now just Prehab. But we love those guys here at Pickleball Recovery, so great resource. Any others that you enjoy? Anybody you like to follow? Like um, Athlean X or? Let's see. I, I'm so bad at recalling That's okay. names. That's okay. Put me but, on the spot. Um, let's see. I mean, there's so many people that I follow, but, well, one of the people who uh, is a yoga instructor who eventually introduced strength stuff, her name is Jenny Rawlings. She okay. has really, really great content. Cool. So Jenny Rawlings and... Um, I also like the uh, person whose handle is Mindful Strength. Mm. Um, she does great stuff. And um, I post a lot of workouts. I'm pickleball yogi. So I, I post a lot of different pickleball workouts. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Where do people follow you? Oh, the Healthy like? Pickleballer. The Healthy Pickleballer. He's great. Yes, he is. The Healthy Pickleballer is really great. He's a PT. He's in Atlanta. If you're in Atlanta and you need a PT, yep. his name is Brian Lee. He's awesome. Yep. Um, and I've been a guest on his show. Me too. Yeah. Well, let's go. <laughs> like attracts like. That's right. Yeah. So he he has really great content. We recently did a series together. Um, nice. So far, like a, a on Instagram and Facebook, on we did agility, balance, um, flexibility. We're gonna do. We still have left. I think mobility and recovery, and we offer different exercises to do each of those, and like nice. kind of explain why it's important. Great. Very cool. Glad glad we just had this little powwow about that because that's yeah he's great i love his stuff and love super him. super smart guy yeah really and super nice, nice. Guy. yeah awesome and where do people follow you online um so i'm on both 
Facebook and Instagram. It's Pickleball Yogi. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Jill. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Pickleball this Recovery. This was super fun. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Did you know there's one place on the web for all your recovery needs? It's at www.pickleballrecovery.com. You'll find all the products I personally use and recommend, along with exclusive discounts on many of them, as well as my blog where I help you make sense out of all the different products and practices out there to keep you moving and feeling better so you play better. After all, your body is the most expensive piece of equipment you own. Also, do you want to know the number one mistake picklers make that leads to increased pain, soreness, stiffness, and injury? Just head over to pickleballrecovery.com and download my free guide to playing with less pain and more enjoyment. Listen, pickleball makes us feel young at heart, but not young in body. So go download my free guide at www.pickleballrecovery.com. See you next time.